Wood has been used as a building material for thousands of years and by nearly every civilization that's ever existed. And we don't really think of wood as a high-tech or space-age building material. But I recently came across this picture from NASA showing wood that is now on the International Space Station. I also learned that we have launched wood into space before and that there is wood on the moon right now and floating out there in space somewhere. There are even plans in the works right now to launch wooden satellites out into space. So in this video, we'll talk about that. I'll explain what happens to wood in the vacuum of space and why scientists think that wood may actually be a good alternative for building satellites and other spacecraft. So stick around and I'll tell you all about it. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff, we have a liftoff. The first planes were built out of wood and canvas, and that continued all the way through World War I and into World War II. Now, while by the 1940s most planes were built out of metals like aluminum, there were still some planes that were built out of wood. The most famous being the Spruce Goose, or the H-4 Hercules that was built by Howard Hughes. The Spruce Goose was actually built from sheets of birch plywood and not from spruce, but Spruce Goose just has a nice ring to it. Now, these planes were not built out of wood because it was a superior building material, but because metal was in short supply due to the war effort. Now from there we go on to the space age, which was kicked off by the launch of the first satellite by Russia in 1957. Now none of the first satellites or rockets were built from wood, but in the early 1960s, there was a series of lunar exploration missions called the Ranger program that did use wood as one of its main components. The missions were meant to take close-up images of the lunar surface and return radiation and seismic data. Ranger 3, 4, and 5 were each designed to approach the moon and crash instruments into the moon using an impact limiter made of balsa wood. Ranger 3 and 4 missed the moon entirely and are still floating out in space somewhere, and Ranger 4 crashed into the far side of the moon. Now that means that there is wood from Earth that is now on the moon and floating out in space somewhere. It's kind of amazing if you think about it. Wood was again used as a space age material when the Chinese used white oak as a reentry shield on reusable satellites in the 1970s. Now you may be asking, wouldn't the wood just burn up in the atmosphere? Now that's a great question. And generally it would, but it was thick enough, it was charred, and that charring insulated it so it didn't burn up completely. And it worked so well that the Chinese launched 26 of these satellites over a period of almost 30 years. So what does happen to wood in space? Well, that brings me to the picture that started this whole rabbit hole. Now this picture is a pre-flight picture of six samples of wood from three different species that was launched to the International Space Station in October, 2021. It's part of a study that's being run by Kyoto University in Japan. They're studying whether wood is a viable material from which to build satellites or other spacecraft. Now, while we know that in the vacuum of space, all moisture that's present in wood, and there is moisture in all wood here on Earth, all of that moisture, that water would get sucked out. And these tests are to see how that vacuum of space would suck that out how it would affect the strength of the wood and, and affect its integrity. They're also looking at how the bombardment of galactic cosmic rays and solar energetic particles would impact the strength of the wood and if it would have any degrading effect that could jeopardize a satellite. Now you may say, Dave, that's all fine and good, but why would you want to build a satellite out of wood in the first place when we have all sorts of other amazing materials like aluminum and carbon fi fiber and, and whatnot. Well, there are a few different reasons. First of all, wood is economical. It's a lot cheaper than some of those other materials. It's also abundant. It's a natural resource. It's sustainable. And upon re-entry into the atmosphere, it burns up completely, leaving only naturally occurring elements like water vapor and carbon dioxide behind. As other materials like aluminum burn up in the atmosphere, tiny unnatural particles are produced which may float in the atmosphere for a long time and may even create environmental problems on Earth. And if you look at all the space junk that's out there surrounding the planet at this moment, a lot of that is eventually going to come down and it can pollute the atmosphere. And that's one of the reasons why wood it would be a good alternative for some of these satellites. 
So if these tests go well, we may see wooden satellites being launched into space as early as 2023. Before then, however, there's another group trying to get wooden satellites into space. This is the Visa Woodsat, and it is slated for launch later this year. It's a bit different than the project sponsored by Kyoto University in that they're using birch plywood and not a solid piece of wood. Now, a solid piece of wood would be something you cut from a tree, you plane down, and it's 100% wood. Plywood is usually thin sheets of wood that's cut and then glued onto each other in a cross pattern to add strength. The plywood is dried and coated in lacquer and a thin layer of aluminum dioxide to help with electric conductivity. The Visa Woodsat has been delayed a few times, but they're hoping to launch soon here in the first part of 2022. It is fascinating to me that with all of our advanced technology, the humble tree still has something to offer us after all these years. So the next time you're doing some woodworking or a DIY project with wood, look up into space and think about how there's wood floating out there in space right now, either on the International Space Station, on the moon, or out there somewhere. So sorry for nerding out on all this, but I do love space and science. I, I love wood. And when I found a story that kind of mixed the both, I just had to share it. So I hope you found it interesting too. And if you did, help me out by hitting that like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.